What was it that the great baseball player once said, let's play two? Well, two can play that game, say the hockey people. And so play two, we shall. Who will win their second staggered game of the night? Will it be the Armstrong Riverhawks or the North Allegheny Tigers? We're about to find out as we bring you live coverage of the championship game of the St. Margaret's Fall Faceoff 2022 edition. Hello, good evening, and welcome. I'm Matt Popchuk, and joined in a little bit by Brian Mitchell, Todd Kazarowski producing for 10 Band TV, and proud to be back with those folks once again for another exciting season of Pennsylvania Interscholastic Hockey League hockey. And this is the preeminent preseason event that the league has to offer. And more importantly than that, it is what every player, coach, and PIHL staffer wants at this time of year, what they all look forward to, a clean slate. It's the preseason. Everybody is 0-0-0. and zero. Everybody thinks they're a contender or, at the bare minimum, a playoff hopeful. And uh, this is the start before the start of – Another season of PIHL hockey, and uh, the excitement is palpable up here, not just down there, as we are about to crown a champion in this long-held preseason event as we come at you live from the USA rink at the Alpha Ice Complex in Harmerville, Pennsylvania. The Armstrong River Hawks earlier rallied to defeat the Pine Richland Rams by a 5-4 score. The North Allegheny Tigers, as they did a year ago, won their semifinal contest of this tournament by a 5-4 margin as well, doing so over the Baldwin Highlanders. North Allegheny is the reigning tournament champion, and they won last year's tournament championship in overtime by a 5-4 margin. And so the Tigers decked out in their road gold uniforms with the black piping names and numbers will try to make it two in a row against the white clad Armstrong River Hawks the designated home game home team excuse me for this preseason game the River Hawks decked out in their white jerseys as I said with the blue helmets and the orange and blue piping and names and numbers and when the puck drops on this final game of the tournament and of the evening, for that matter, we are going to get a look at two of the premier defensemen in the PIHL, if not the entire Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Trey Gallo for North Allegheny. He'll be wearing number four this season for the Tigers. One of the top players uh, in the league, regardless of classification, at his position a year ago. The hero of the PIHL outdoor game, which was the first game of the 2022 calendar year, as he scored both goals at North Park in a 2-1 victory over Seneca Valley in a very spectacular event and the first outdoor game staged by the league in many years. And for the Armstrong River Hawks, they're a grinding, hard-working team. They're going to try to play a physical game, as they are one to do, as they try to do many times a year ago when they finished third place in their division and qualified for the Penguins Cup playoffs before succumbing to South Fayette in round one. And their top defenseman, well, one of their top defensemen anyway, and one of their players to watch, young Owen Sheck, who is really making a name for himself at that position in a big way. He can play a solid 200-foot game. He can score just as capably as Gallo can for North Allegheny. So we might be seeing some real 200-foot hockey here tonight, and it should be a very interesting and very fluid contest to watch and you just look up and down that Armstrong roster to say nothing of the North Allegheny roster and you get a feel for the legacy and and the familial spirit of the Pennsylvania Interscholastic Hockey League a lot of very familiar names younger brothers older brothers etc etc on both rosters and some of the names we recite in the next hour or so are probably going to ring a few bells for you if you've been doing this as long as we have. Once again, the North Allegheny Tigers victorious over Baldwin, the same team they vanquished in last year's semifinal. And Armstrong prevailing over Pine Richland after falling behind in that game by a 3-1 score at one point. And we're just a couple of minutes away from puck drop here at the USA rink. Matt Popchuk coming at you once again. And glad you could be with us as we are about to uh, 
Strap in for what should be quite the magic carpet ride for us here in the 10-man TV broadcast area. We've got a lot of exciting things potentially in the works for you in the 2022-2023 PIHL season. And some of those things will be ready for public consumption and be known for public consumption as we get closer and closer to the regular season puck drop. And I may have to ask Brian Mitchell when he comes on later about that regular season puck drop because it's going to be here before you know it. October 3rd, the first day that PIHL varsity teams can begin regular season play. And uh, it's sobering that summer is coming to an end, but exciting all at once as uh, we are about to drop the puck here in Harmerville, Pennsylvania. Just a couple of more warm-up shots being fired at either goaltender. And we're going to give you a positive ID on the starting goaltenders here for the Armstrong Riverhawks. It appears that Luke Contrail, the sophomore, is going to be the one who gets to go for them in this championship game. And for the North Allegheny Tigers, who are warming up off to our left it is going to be rylan murphy the senior who is stretching out right there at center ice next to the referees and he is apparently going to be getting the nod for north allegheny just moments away from the puck drop here between the river hawks and the tigers armstrong again third place in their division last year made the playoffs they were a very consistent team in PIHL Class AA, and a lot of people you know, who are in the loop feel that Armstrong really could be a very serious contender, even more so this season. A lot of talent coming back and a lot of exciting young players coming down the pipeline. And so... The teams will talk amongst themselves briefly at their respective cages, and we're just about ready to go here. Armstrong and North Allegheny for the St. Margaret's Fall Face-Off Championship. Always a very exciting preseason event, and we thank the Alpha Ice Complex for their perennial hospitality in staging this event, as they do year after year. Uh, always very uh, voluminous and diverse a uh, group of PIHL teams participating, and a lot of really exciting games that we probably don't talk about as much as we should, which is why you know, all the more reason we're excited to be here with you tonight for this pre-regular season tune-up contest in which we will decide a tournament champion. Hello, Brian Mitchell. Well, we're back, I guess, here. Last time you saw me, I was uh, calling a girls' championship game, and now we're back at the Alpha Ice Complex for another and we're back there for the PIHL St. Margaret's Fall Face-Off Championship game. And we're getting a look at North Allegheny's new head coach, Andrew Sice. That's the big headline uh, coming out of that school district at the moment. Mike Bagnato retiring after a very long and successful career coaching a couple of the Northern Area High School hockey programs. He coached NA, of course. He coached Pine Richland to a Penguins Cup final many years ago. And so Andrew Sice, certainly with some mighty big shoes to fill, but very capable of doing so with the team he's got to work with this season. And for the Armstrong River Hawks, they are coached once again by Ed Jeremy III, assisted by Luke Werner. Carlin's the referee, ready to do the honors here. And the game is on. Tigers attack left to right on your computer screen or mobile device. It's chipped up ahead to the North Allegheny Tigers, but sent back promptly deep into the Tigers' zone by Armstrong, Wyatt Tutak, the senior, playing up behind the North Allegheny net in front. Backhander, a spinorama maneuver, but Rylan Murphy was ready for it as he denies Huffman from in tight. Caleb Hoffman, excuse me, the Armstrong senior with the first quality shot and chance for either team in this game. It comes 19 seconds in, and our first faceoff comes 19 seconds in as well. Hoffman wins it to the boards. But North Allegheny staying persistent, takes it away, and chips it back towards center. In pursuit 
Evan Perrott, the junior, for the Tigers, but Armstrong's going to be able to clean up their own zone. And Hoffman comes back the other way, leading the charge, but a good poke check there by Travis Laymark, the sophomore from North Allegheny. And here's Gallo in on goal. Gallo with an early chance. Gallo, dangle, snipe, and it is a good day to Selly Hard. Well, you see 44 that. seconds in. Sorry, Brian. Trey yeah. Gallo makes it 1-0. Well, you've seen that the last four years here at the Alpha Ice Complex and up a barrel as Trey Gallo is going to start his senior year with a wonderful... Wonderful goal. He's inside, outside, and he just buries it behind. And he really just undressed Contrail on that play. Gallo, we said he could play a 200-foot game, and we weren't kidding. Loose puck out in front. The Riverhawks going in after it. Tigers chip it away, trying to keep it alive at the left point. They can't. Armstrong coming back two on two. But Hooks is well covered by Kalazi, and he can just risk that weakly wider than that before North Allegheny takes it over. An unassisted breakaway goal, a partial breakaway anyway, by Trey Gallo to make it one nothing North Allegheny just 44 seconds in. Kerber up ahead of the play calling for the puck for N.A. as they try to penetrate the attacking zone one more time, but he was not seen by his North Allegheny teammate, and so for the Tigers, they'll be sending it back in. And that was Tyler Bianchin, the sophomore, on here early for Andrew Sice, and he accepts this cross-ice feed from Brock Murphy as the Tigers enter the Riverhawk zone Offside, so we get another stoppage in play just about two minutes in. Tyler Gallo giving this crowd something to cheer about. One half of this crowd in any event. 50. Face off just outside the River Hawks blue line, and it will be battled for and ultimately won by NA. Here's Gallo at his own blue line. Up ahead, a little too strong for Evan Kaminsky. Riverhawks trying to play it off the glass and out, and they will do so successfully as this puck dribbles through the referee's crease. And ultimately, Gallo gathers it in between his own circles, right in front of goaltender Rylan Murphy, who made a nice save on Logan Hoffman early. From the corner, it comes to Kalazi. Kalazi on goal, and that's sticked aside easily by Contrail. That was Caleb Hoffman, excuse me, with that first shot on goal of the game earlier for the Riverhawks as we get a whistle, a stoppage in play, and line changes for both these teams in the early moments of a 1-0 game first period. Yeah, Gallo brought that one in offside, and... And in the meantime, the River Hawks lose control of this puck off the faceoff just outside their own stripe. Puck coming back in behind the North Allegheny goal where it's going to be played at defensively by the Tigers. Owen Logan, the junior, able to work it up ahead. Here's Matt Irwin. Irwin, a very dangerous forward last season for North Allegheny as the Tigers went all the way to the Penguins Cup playoffs with the number one record in PIHL Class AAA. They were... Upended, though, in the playoffs by Seneca Valley, and Seneca Valley ultimately was defeated by PIHL Penguins Cup champion Peters Township, which went on to win the Pennsylvania Cup as well. Armstrong onside. Riverhawks playing this puck as that forward is buttressed by Owen Logan. That was Tomarov. The Armstrong forward trying to use his speed to catch up to that puck, and he gets it deep and tries to keep the sequence alive for the River Hawks, but instead it's going to be an icing call against North Allegheny, and so the Hawks have to settle for an offensive zone faceoff to the right of Ryland Murphy. All right, let's just make sure we're pretty good here still on the audio levels. Uh, we're having some problems earlier. <laughs> just checking them in. How are we doing over there, Todd? Good, good, good. I'm back. Okay, up a little bit. 
Hey, it's preseason for yeah. broadcasters, too. We don't have to let get any, the settings go, so. Don't let anybody tell you different. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And the Tigers are not going to ice this puck. Official says it was deflected on its way in behind the Armstrong goal line, so it's played around the horn and back toward the neutral zone, but not all the way out. Gallo keeps it in just inside the blue line, and he snaps a shot that's blocked. One of the Hawks got a piece of that. That was Chase Huff, the senior, using his physical frame to swallow that puck. And now the River Hawks do clear their zone. And coming back is Huff over the North Allegheny line. His wrister right into the glove of Murphy, who makes it look effortless with 12 and a half to play in the first. The nice thing to notice is both semifinals today, both goaltenders were the backups. So each of them now is a fresh, new, clean slate, but also speaks to the depth of these two squads as they can be able to have two tendies that can go out in a tournament system and they can rely on them to be able to get to where they are right now. As first games were 5-4 each, but they were able to be on top of everything. Meanwhile, a penalty coming up against the Tigers and getting the first power play of the game, trailing one nothing, will be the Riverhawks. It is Evan Barnhart, the senior defenseman, who will be the guilty party here. And so the Hawks, who are sitting on still just that one shot on goal on the first shift of the game, are going to have a chance to tilt the ice a little bit in the other direction now for the first time in some time. But a misplay of the puck there is a big break for North Allegheny. And the rough start for Armstrong continues. My apology, I believe that Armstrong's goaltender has played both games here today. I, I misread that one whenever I was looking at it earlier. Yakmak trying to center that puck. It's blocked on its way to the net. A save made there from 30-some feet by Rylan Murphy on the distance shot by Owen Check. Now here's Check center point through a crowd. That never made it through. Turnaround try. Put just wide by Nikolai Todorov. Check left point. In on goal. Murphy swallows it and knocks it aside. Good shift here by the Armstrong power play with 1.10 to go in the minor penalty to Barnhart. Around the boards it comes. Owen Sheck waiting for it once again. He snaps it weakly toward the net. That never made it through. North Allegheny really supporting Murphy well as their penalty killers are finally able to get a clear halfway through the PK. My apologies. That is Dylan Morris in net for Armstrong. He did play in the first semifinal game, so he is playing back-to-back. -back. Uh, Contreal is not playing tonight in the second game. So it is Dylan Morris who got lit up on that breakaway goal by Tyler Gallo, which remains the only marker for either side with six minutes gone by in the first period. And this snapshot goes off the side of the net by Huff. Chase Huff did not miss that one by much. Huff inside the left circle, monitored by Logan. From a bad angle, he tries to put it on net, but it's blocked by the foot of Logan. Got a piece of that with a skate. Now a one-timer attempted at the side of the net. Logan hooks the junior D-man just fanning on that one. That's a bit of a break for North Allegheny. Final moments of the Armstrong power play trying to find their first goal of this championship contest as this snapshot is deflected wide of goal. Centering pass on the backdoor play will misfire, and North Allegheny clears the zone. Great job there by junior Ryan Jackman to pick up the trash, and we're back to five aside. Shots on goal, 5-1 to one in favor of the Riverhawks now. I had the shots on goal flip-flop, so we're both a little off our game in this first period, Brian. Don't worry about that. The scoreboard's backwards than what I expected. Uh, the Riverhawks are supposed to be the home team here, so it just that's what's going to throw everybody off at this point. Understandable error, but in any event, the Riverhawks yeah. still pressing the issue here as we are under 10 minutes to play in this first period. Of this much, we are certain it is still 1-0 North Allegheny as the Tigers chip this puck Back to center. North Allegheny settling the play down for the moment, gaining the red line and dumping it off the glove of one of the River Hawks, and it goes in behind the cage. Jackman in pressing the issue, and North Allegheny forces a turnover as Kaminsky puts it on that save made by Dylan Morris, and the rebound is still loose at the side of the net. Morris unable to cover it as Jackman knocks a man down. Jeremy wanting a call. An offensive zone penalty perhaps on the Tigers, but he will not get one as we play on here. Good shift here by the Tigers as the puck is finally not iced. Crawford puts up the washout sign, and so we play on. No offense to the Riverhawks. They have been getting away with a lot in these games, and 
you know, they play a very physical style. I'm not, a, I'm not saying that they're getting away with a lot. They just play a very physical style and a lot of on-edge stuff and, you know, trying to get the calls like that. You know, it's a bigger team for North Allegheny. They're a very a large style team. They play a big game. Derek Chrisman almost caught himself a lucky souvenir or maybe not so lucky over on that Armstrong bench. Speaking of which, uh, myself and my producer, Todd Kazarowski, almost caught an unlucky souvenir uh, when another team was warming up prior to this contest. Always got to keep that noggin on a swivel. And so the faceoff coming up to the left of Morris with half the time off the first period clock gone here in Harmerville. North Allegheny Tigers won, Armstrong River Hawks nothing as these teams battle it out for the St. Margaret's Fall Face-Off Championship. That one tipped just wide and a good effort there by Caleb Hoffman. Nice little backhand tip coming off the boards. Chance here perhaps for the Tigers. Here's Baker toward the net. Oh, Gallo almost had a second, but he deflected it just wide. Kerber between the circles. Turnaround try is blocked. Gallo gloves it down. Gallo centers it. Put off the side of the net twice by one of the Tigers. It's loose. Is it in? No, it is not. Morris throws it. And there were one too many bodies in that blue paint for his comfort and for the officials' comfort, for that matter, as we get a whistle with the net off its moorings and a stoppage in play. Wholesale changes for both teams with eight minutes to play in this first period. Shots a little more even now, six to four. Still a slight edge for the Hawks who trail where it matters. One zip. Yeah, a little solid back and forth with the two teams, each one not showing a little bit too much to eat the other one. They might need that a little bit later in the game. Jackman on to take the draw for North Allegheny. But Carson Franceschi, the junior defenseman, wins it cleanly for the Riverhawks. Riverhawks, though, having a little bit of trouble getting it out of their own zone, but now they will. And this puck up ahead for Hooks. Hooks centers it. One-timer fanned on by Jason Rulo. The freshman getting some ice time here for Ed Jeremy's club, and Rulo has been a very promising-looking Young player, don't be surprised if he gets even more varsity minutes once the regular season starts. Logan hooks in over the line, but it's out of play, and so we get a whistle with seven and a half to go in period one. I really like what I see out of Rolo in the games that I've been able to cover him so far. He gets the he goes to the high IQ areas. He's a very solid forward, um, not afraid of going in front of the net if he needs to, and you don't see a lot of that coming out of the freshman coming in. Well, we saw a lot of uh, Peters Township games, you and I, a year ago, and they had a very exciting freshman, William Tomko, and it was very unusual to see a freshman get ice time as we have a stoppage in play. Not quite sure what that was about, and perhaps for the best that we don't as we are about to come back to action here with 7.32 to play. Unusual situation there with the EMT crossing the ice, but not an injured player in sight on either bench or on the ice, obviously, for that matter. In any case... Armstrong on the attack here to the left of the North Allegheny cage, but not for long as the Tigers bring it up. Three men strong, but are unable to enter the Armstrong attacking zone. Riverhawks get it back to center. North Allegheny over the line and a hard hit there on Matt Irwin. Boy, did he take a licking from Aiden Mirando. Speaking of freshmen who are fun to watch, and you talked earlier about that physical game Armstrong plays well. Irwin just got an abject lesson. Chase Huff with a little tit for tat coming from the North Allegheny defense. Puck still deep in the North Allegheny zone. Around the boards it comes and in on goal off a skate and cleared back through center. This should be icing on NA and it is with 6.36 to go. Oh, 
Uh, to finish my earlier thought before the digression with the EMT, Tomko, the freshman, very exciting player for Peters Township last year. But depending on the program, seeing great freshmen play for the varsity, t their, the, his school's varsity team, is, is sort of a few and far between kind of thing these days. And that's what makes these players, you know, you you don't want to show too much favoritism toward one group of players or the other. But, yeah, I kind of get a kick of seeing you know, some of these freshmen play and get a chance to prove themselves. Well, you see them every four years uh, progress as they continue to grow in this uh, environment. And you don't, you don't get the JV time that they would normally get in that. But, my man, by the time they become seniors, especially uh, defensemen in this league, it, it's something else to behold. Like, you're looking at one right now carrying the puck. Speak of the devil, Tyler Gallo with his low snapshot on goal sticked aside by Dylan Morris. And Morris has had to weather a little bit of a storm of late as North Allegheny is – running up that shot total a little bit more after being slow to do so at the outset of this game. But, hey, they got the only shot that counts so far, that breakaway goal by Gallo as this puck is put wide to the right of Morris's counterpart, Ryland Murphy. This one deflecting off the North Allegheny player's skate, that of Alex Heron, the junior forward, and long enough for an icing against the Tigers. NA fans... Expressing their indignation, but in any event, a face-off coming to Rylan Murphy's right. Very hard-fought first period thus far between two teams expected to contend per usual in their respective classifications. When the PIHL regular season begins on October 3rd, North Allegheny should again be one of the favorites in AAA as they typically are in the Armstrong River Hawks. Ever since that school merger of several years ago, they've made a name for themselves annually in the AA classification. River Hawks could be a dark horse in the PIHL this year. We shall see. Meanwhile, here's Matt Irwin of NA, wristing it hard and wide. And you were touching on the uh, competitive nature here. I want to note that we were speaking uh, with the league before the game. This is the first time that a team with a loss is in not only the semifinal of the St. Margaret tournament, but the final. And North Allegheny had a, an overtime lo a shootout loss to Seneca Valley in the opening night. So you want to talk about the competitive level, which is another, another team out there. Shout out Seneca Valley. You're looking good so far. That was a great game on one day. I on saw Tuesday. that shootout, and I saw the winning goal. Mm -hmm. Going to go out on a pretty sturdy limb and say those two teams don't like each other very much. <laughs> <laughs> and even more so now, <laughs> perhaps, as a result of that, as we have a puck out of play in Armstrong territory. But, no, you Sen and I were there at the outdoor game last year, a Sen very hard-fought game Sen between those schools. Seneca Valley and North Allegheny at any given time, any given place, I, that's one you can sit up and behold. They just, they just don't like each other. You're right. And uh, perhaps uh, paths will cross – this approaching March, one never knows. Mm -hmm. As Morris, oh, that is a nifty glove save there from a terrible angle. And sometimes the terrible angles are the ones that can bite you as a goaltender, but Dylan Morris wasn't fooled that time. Morris not looking at all rattled after giving up that early goal, pardon me. He's been very dialed in. Rylan Murphy been a busy man in his own right, and he's looked very good thus far surviving that penalty kill, and he makes a couple of saves from point blank to keep it a one nothing game with four and a half to play. Through distance, this puck is fired wide of the goal. In front of comes the wrist through traffic, never That's made off. it through. Murphy didn't know where it was, and the net is indeed off its moorings. Lots of stick tapping along the boards on the N.A. bench here, and deservedly so for you, Rylan Murphy. you got to give him credit there. The net was off, but he still stood up as if you got to play to the whistle, and Rylan Murphy showing the growth that he had in a year from last year, stepping up when they need him most, and that's what respected from the bench. Ten shots on goal now for the Riverhawks, but they still have not found an answer for number 50 in golden black. And here's a funny deflection that Murphy has to pounce on before Graf can get to it for Armstrong. Another face-off coming up from the same spot with just over four minutes to play in the first.
Huff takes the draw for the Hawks. Wins it to the corner. But it's intercepted by Sam Irvin of North Allegheny, the sophomore blue liner. And Luke Walkoskis taps it back towards center, but Armstrong intercepts in the neutral zone and promptly sends this puck deep into the North Allegheny end. Back to center red, where Colin Kutch gathers it in, another freshman D-man for Armstrong. Into the NA zone it goes, and right back to the neutral zone as these teams kind of play pitch and catch here with three and a half to play. On this puck for North Allegheny, Wolkoskis. Wolkoskis has a man open down the middle, but he can't find him. That was Evan Perrot. as this puck is loose in the circle. Irwin knocked down, nothing called, as it's played behind the Armstrong net. Bouncing around out in front, Irwin looking for it, but the Riverhawks are able to get it back to center red. Andrew Sykes wants a line change, and he'll get one with three minutes to play in the first. Armstrong just trying to get this puck out of danger, so maybe they can get some fresh bodies out there for Red Jeremy's team as well. But Tyler Gallo, as he is one to do, forces a turnover, trying to go backward to Jackman. He can't, and Armstrong might have a two-on-one if it hurries. Down the left wing comes Adam Hooks. Hooks looking for space into the logo, and Ryland Murphy will say, I'll take that. Thank you very much. Rollo was on the far post. Uh, had a good look at him, but a defender in between the two of them. So he just took the shot, and Murphy was just too big in net. He gets down there. It's, he's a tall goaltender. He's lanky, and he just takes up a lot of that cage. And yeah, nothing wrong with making the selfish play, so to speak, every now and then, but just a better save by Murphy. And here's some space for Heron as he puts it just over the glove. Oh, he had space to shoot at, too, but he could not sneak it by Dylan Morris. Morris got a little bit of that glove plucker on it. I think you're right, Brian. I think he just got a piece. What well, didn't get much of it, but he got enough of it to keep it nice a one nothing game. By Rolo. Bianchin forces a turnover, gets it deep, and again, a quick line change on the fly for the North Allegheny Tigers in the last couple of minutes of first period play here at the Alpha Complex in Harmerville. And the Tigers with another chance late here. Centering pass, snapshot, score! Evan Kerber, isn't that a fine how do you do? And the Tigers make it 2 nothing with under two minutes to play. Just a nice little play by Gallo off the boards to find Kerber who was streaking in from the point. Kerber waited out and just fired it low. 2 nothing, Tigers. Trey Gallo just continuing to do all kinds of damage at both ends of the rink. The Chris Letang of the North Allegheny Tigers, if you will. Mm -hmm. And North Allegheny with a little bit of an extra confidence booster. Not that they necessarily needed one, but those late goals can be a big shot in the arm for the team that scores them and a bit of a downer for the team that gives them up. So we'll see how Armstrong responds here with a buck 40 left. You weren't able to watch the semifinals games today, but if you notice, Armstrong was down 3-1 going into the third period at, in that semifinal. We're able to ring off four consecutive goals in the first seven minutes of the period, and we're up 5-4, 5-3 before a late goal by Pine Richland brought him back within one. But they, they have the pedigree and the tournament ability to do things like that. They're a resilient team, absolutely. Long, long way to go here, but here come the Tigers again. Kalezi all alone. Say made, Morris. Rebound. Morris has it. Does he know where it is? Yes, he does. It's underneath his glove insofar as the Tigers were crashing the net and looking for a cheapie there was Brett Baker, the senior. Baker no worse for the wear, and neither, fortunately, is Dylan Morris as he gets up and adjusts his equipment before the defensive zone faceoff. Good head, heads up play there by Morris as when Brett Baker was coming in, he was sliding in, and you don't know what's going to happen if you can't have control of that puck and it's free. That could be a possibility of a goal coming in if the stick is the first. Do the Tigers have any more magic here in the final minute? An early goal by Tyler Gallo, a late goal assisted by Tyler Gallo, scored by Evan Kerber, and that is where we stand at the moment. Owen Sheck dumps it in just shy of the North Allegheny blue line. The Tigers... Gather it up. Here's Laymark. Far boards playing it behind the goal line for Brock Murphy, the senior. Up ahead it comes to Evan Kaminsky. 
Check the assistant captain of Armstrong, clears his zone. Brock Murphy giving chase. This will not be icing against the River Hawks with 20 seconds to play. Instead, Murphy will speed across his own blue line through the neutral zone and get dumped on his wallet by Nikolai Todorov as Murphy covers up for maybe one final faceoff in the North Allegheny zone with 10 and a half seconds remaining. And since we are in the home of pit hockey, it should be noted that shots on goal, now 13 to nine. I knew that was coming. In favor of the River Hawks, in case you were even more curious. Uh, here we go. <laughs> River Hawks control it. Oh, quick kick save there by Murphy. He had to be ready for that one. Three seconds left. Not enough time for another opportunity for the River Hawks. And so this first period will end with the North Allegheny Tigers leading the Armstrong River Hawks by a score of two to nothing on a goal in the first minute of play on a partial breakaway by Tyler Gallo. Gallo with less than two minutes to play in the period, setting up a goal from behind the goal line that was scored by Evan Kerber. Tigers two, River Hawks nothing. You're watching coverage of the St. Margaret's Fall Faceoff Championship game with Brian Mitchell. I'm Matt Popchuk, and you're watching it on 10 Band TV. I was saying, right? Oh, well. <laughs> Back to action here as we await second period puck drop at the USA rink here at the Alpha Ice Complex, Harmerville, Pennsylvania, home of pit hockey, as I said moments ago, and annual home of the St. Margaret's Fall Faceoff Tournament. You're watching the championship game in which the North Allegheny Tigers lead the Armstrong River Hawks by a score of 2-0. Trey Gallo, early... Breakaway goal for the Tigers, then assisting on a goal by Evan Kerber with 1.57 to go in the first period, and that's where we stand. Armstrong did have the only power play of that period as Evan Barnhart was assessed a minor penalty with the Tigers clinging to that one nothing lead, and despite a flurry of shots faced by Rylan Murphy, he has turned aside all 14 to this point. Nine shots on goal in that first period, by the way for the North Allegheny Tigers who are trying to repeat as preseason tournament champions here in Harmerville. I gotta give a shout out here to North Allegheny. Uh, the hitting and the intensity up oh, until I was about to say something, Irvin just, uh, I was gonna give them a little bit of credit for not letting their heads get into the game and Irvin just came after somebody right after I said that. So I, I, I take what I was just about to say, and I say they did good up until that point. <laughs> and I, the way that this Armstrong team plays, a little bit of chippiness, a little bit on edge. It's not, it's not illegal. Don't get me wrong. It's a way you can play this game. But they play hard, and they can it, get it, in it your head. It gets heads. in your head. Yeah, yeah it gets not in to your put head. Too fine so, a point on it. They did a good job for the first 17 minutes and 34 seconds. Alas, it is Irvin who will feel shame for two minutes and then get free. Uh, roughing is the indication against the North Allegheny forward, and so the River Hawks 0 for 1 on the power play, as I said a moment ago, will have a chance to make the second time the charm and make that donut disappear early in the second period. Still a lot of time left, and as Brian Mitchell said, the River Hawks were not above erasing a multi-goal deficit in their earlier game tonight a semi-final round victory over the Pine Richland Rams. And Pine Richland always a dangerous club as this puck is deflected in on goal. Good save there by Murphy. 
He's reading those deflections really well. That's not the first deflected puck we've seen where he had to read a funny bounce. Both goaltenders are tracking the puck very well in this game, not only in this game, in this tournament. Uh, this is one thing you got to watch throughout the regular season is how well these goaltenders will react because this is Murphy's net now. So there's no shares. There's no way of anything coming into play with him. This is, the, this is his net now. North Allegheny's Andrew Seiss was trying to change penalty killers in haste and get Jackman on there. He finally did. Armstrong just trying to get offensive zone penetration here and get something started on the power play as we're already halfway through the minor roughing penalty on Irvin. Owen Sheck for Hoffman. Caleb Hoffman going left point. Jameson Yakmak. Yakmak had an older brother Jordan play for the Armstrong area, a very talented amateur hockey player back in the day. Another one of those PIHL legacy families. Owen Sheck snapping it through a crowd, but that never made it through. Yakmak unable to slam home the rebound. 25 to go on the power play for the Riverhawks as that shot is blocked by Baker of North Allegheny. To the half wall it comes. Far corner, Armstrong pinned in, trying to find an opening. Ooh. And a bounding puck there almost took a funny bounce in behind Rylan Murphy. Two the tech. Tigers have it. Tutek got a skate on it. He did indeed. Final moments here. Check has to put it on net. He does. They made rebound and stopped again by Murphy. There is no rebound. Jamison Yakmak was chomping at the bit for one, but there wasn't one to be had. And again, we are back to full strength. Goes back to the tracking that he has on that. That was a nice little deflection coming in. Uh, quick play to get the glove up and be able to put it inside that catcher's net. 14.26 to go here in the second period. Be interesting to see how this one goes the rest of the way. Hawks credited unofficially with two shots on goal on that second power play. They are now 0 for 2. The North Allegheny penalty kill 2 for 2. North Allegheny, traditionally a very sound defensive team, even in years where they don't necessarily fill the net, they can win games, or they've proven in the past, I should say, they can win games by just grinding teams down with their defense and getting great goaltending like they're getting so far from Ryland Murphy. And that seems to be the identity that NA is trying to create in 22-23 as they get ready for a brand new season. Like You're going to rely on guys like Irvin and... Uh and Murphy and Kaminsky, all the new names that are on this, especially with a new coach. And now all of a sudden you're, you know, you have to rely on that legacy. Rulo on one hand was trying to get a shot on net, but he was taken <laughs> down. And the officials say he was cleanly taken down by Owen Logan, the junior. <laughs> Not no to mention penalty Gallo. Call. <laughs> and Gallo, for Gallo. that matter. Yeah. Just in case. <laughs> but you, you know how they never started freshman for years, so it's hard to become a, a freshman in a school like North Allegheny and come on. Logan over the line, trying to sneak around a check there, and he does duck around Narando, puts it out in front. Oh. And the goaltender, Morris, didn't know where it was. Fortunately for his sake, Armstrong had it behind its own net, and they clear it back to the North Allegheny blue line before the Tigers dump it back into the Armstrong zone. In hot pursuit is Evan Kaminsky. Kaminsky near corner, back to the point, but this one way too heavy, and this is going to be icing as Bianchin watches it go by. Four minutes into the second period, still a 2-0 lead for North Allegheny as they bookended that first period with goals by Trey Gallo and Evan Kerbert. Off the faceoff, they're trying to force it through Morris, and that was Kaminsky trying to pick up a cheapie for himself, but nothing doing. And so they'll face it off to Morris's right one more time as Czech and Franceski come on defensively for the Riverhawks. This time it's Armstrong prevailing on the faceoff. Franceski winning it to the back wall before he is hounded by Kaminsky and that forces a turnover. Out in front it comes, but none of the Tigers are there and Armstrong is able to get it back to the red line. Kotrov just moves real quick side to side and he was in the slot at the time and both of the North Allegheny forwards and offensive players just decided to back off to make sure that he didn't even get an opportunity to take it the other way. And a clip there on one of the Riverhawks was not noticed and so 
We continue to play five on five here as Murphy gloves this puck down and elects to hold it for an own zone faceoff. Off the air, you were noting the Russian speed, Brian Mitchell, and you know the fastest way to make a name for yourself in this league is by being fast. So mm -hmm. he's another player to watch this year for the Riverhawks as they gear up for what they hope will be a lengthier playoff run mm -hmm. than the year before. He was shifty. He's fast, but he's also got that side-to-side -side speed to be able to cut across the middle and then get the straightforward speed. In the corner it comes. Here are the Riverhawks. Yakmak on goal. Nice! Close range save there by Murphy. That's another tough puck to see, but he saw it all the way. Yakmak from behind the goal line. In the high slot area to nobody in particular, and North Allegheny easily skates it back to center. Baker gains the red line, dumps it into the corner where Gallo was waiting to gather it in. He centers for Baker. No, that's Kerber, I'm sorry. And Kerber making one too many moves. Ooh. Kerber was open at the near post for the shot pass one-timer, but it was not to be. Puck catches the referee's skate. That's a break for Armstrong. And now the Riverhawks may be guilty of making one too many passes as it looks like they had something going there in North Allegheny territory. Wyatt Tutak, the senior, trying to follow this puck to the boards, and he does. 50-50 battle's going to be won by the Tigers, though, and Gallo backhands it through center in pursuit for North Allegheny is Evan Kerber, the most recent Tiger goal scorer before coming off at the end of his shift with 11-11 to go to the ice cut here in Harmerville. North Allegheny with a 2-0 lead over Armstrong as the Tigers look to defend their St. Margaret's fall faceoff crown. The Mount Lebanon Blue Devils, the team they vanquished in the championship game a year ago in extra time. And a penalty is coming up. An icing call is also coming up. The icing call will go against the Riverhawks. Mm. To whom is the penalty? It is against the Tigers. Wolkuskas, the freshman, sent off with 10.50 to go in the second. Is the third time the charm for the Armstrong PP. Andrew Sice having words with both officials here. And perhaps a little bit of gamesmanship on Sice's part, trying to maybe angle for the next call as all the power plays thus far have belonged to the Riverhawks, but North Allegheny's penalty kill, spearheaded by goaltender Ryan, Ryland Murphy, excuse me, has hung tough. And the cliche about your goaltender having to be your best penalty killer so far has rung true. 18 saves thus far for Murphy with 10.50 to play in the second and the Tigers up two to nothing. Todorov, right point for Hoffman. Hoffman with a fluttering puck toward the net. And glove down by Murphy. Looked like Andy Van Slyke making that play out in center field, like back from back in the day. Little pop fly toward the net. Murphy snatches it, and they'll face it off with 144 to go in the minor penalty to Luke Walkoskis. Face off one by the River Hawks. Here's Owen Sheck for Hoffman. Hoffman top of the right circle for check. High slot area, save made Murphy. Rebound, open cage, swiped at in desperation by Hoffman, but couldn't get there on time. Riverhawks keep it alive inside the NA zone. One timer toward the net, save again by Murphy, and he leaves his paint to force a face off. What you're seeing out there is this tale of two different teams. You got your Armstrong team, which is fast and quick and making the shots wherever they can. And then you got the, your systematic, your methodic North Allegheny, who is maybe not as fast as the uh, the, the Armstrong Ringer Hawks, but they're giving them the opportunity to make the first pass, getting the opportunity to get in behind the defense, and then taking every chance they can when they can and making taking a good shot instead of forcing the shots. Now the game of rope-a-dope continues as the Tigers continue to absorb Blow after blow from the Armstrong offense and power play, but still a 2-0 lead in favor of North Allegheny, and they've certainly been the more opportunistic team, uh -huh. if not 
the more aggressive team offensively. And they might have a chance shorthanded. Here's Gallo. Gallo, can he get around the last man? No, he cannot. He'll have to peel back, but he will take some time off the penalty clock. Gallo trying to do oh. it all himself. Rises man in the boards and forces a steal by Evans. Evans lost control of the puck in the near corner, and he puts a shove into one of the Armstrong players there. Luke Evans, the senior, with some great teamwork there with Trey Gallo to take more time off the penalty clock as the Riverhawks come in offside. 45 to go in the five-on-four advantage for Armstrong. 9.35 to go in the second period. Still a 2-0 game in favor of the Tigers. Something I noticed down here about North Allegheny is whenever they had Gallo bring it in and he realized there were two defenders coming in to block him from the shot, he backed off, but the forward still came in and dropped down below the circles. Gallo looked for the pass instead. Didn't work that time, but you think that's going to work at some point during the season for them. Now this is, again, it is manifestly a preseason tournament, and preseason is that time to experiment at the yeah. risk of sounding right. It's when you want to try those things hey. and... I come out here chemistry and whatnot. I say those things, but it looks like I'm giving away some secrets that I might be using <laughs> later. But hey, the tape's going to show. It most certainly is. 18 seconds to go in the Armstrong power play. Oh, kept in with the glove. Oh. No, it was not. It was not kept in by Todorov. Offside again are the Riverhawks, mm -hmm. though not for nothing. Another great effort there by the Russian. Just couldn't quite keep it onside. He just stayed along the line there, and you had to be in the perfect position to make that call. Hats off to the referee. And this faceoff won by the Hawks, but they're going to have to hurry here if they want to get another crack at Ryland Murphy. North Allegheny's penalty kill just continuing to do yeoman's work to protect that lead with under nine minutes to play in the second period as Walkoskis is released. Here are the Tigers on the prowl. Backhander wide of the net. Matt Irvin on here for Andrew Sice's team. Trying to center it for Perrot. That misfired, and the Armstrong Riverhawks try to counterattack. Here's Wyatt Tutak to the right circle. Wristing it high over the noggin of Ryland Murphy. Taking the rebound in flight is Irvin over the line. Looking for Wolkoskis. He is ridden out of the play. Oh, oh, here we go. Riverhawks, and here's a breakaway the other way. Graf. The Riverhawks with a chance, and putting it wide is Graf. I, I, I think Murphy got a piece of that one, probably off the blocker and just let it ride up high. Jake Graf, the freshman, with a glorious opportunity to cut the North Allegheny lead in half, but he could not find the four by six. Watching the replay came in. Murphy off the blocker, off the blocker and up into the netting. Ryland Murphy with a championship effort so far in this St. Margaret's Fall Faceoff Championship game. As we are past the midpoint of the final game of the tournament, North Allegheny still with that 2 0 advantage. 24 shots on goal and counting for the Riverhawks. 24 saves by Ryland Murphy. If I remember correctly, North Allegheny outshot Baldwin, I think 53 to 24, something in the first game. So this is uncharacteristic for North Allegheny. And there's a penalty coming up against. Todorov was fighting one of the Tigers for possession in the offensive zone, and we might be getting the first North Allegheny power play of the game. Yes, we are. It is Todorov who is going to go off for a cross check with 7.37 remaining until the ice cut. And North Allegheny, which has the Riverhawks wondering what the heck it's going to take to beat number 50, is going to have a chance to really potentially take control of the game here in the second half of the second period. Tigers win the first draw off their first power play. They have killed three penalties thus far. Now it is Armstrong that finds the skate on the other foot. While Koska centering for Gallo. Gallo right wing to Irvin. Irvin for Gallo, center point blocked. Kept inside the zone and sent deep. Kalezi unable to play that puck. 
And Armstrong gets it back through center. Franceschi floats it toward the goal wide of the left-handed glove of Murphy. 1.23 to go in the minor cross-checking penalty to Todorov. Gallo to the net. Gallo shoots, save made, rebound, cleared but not out. Kicked out by Morris. It's still loose. Morris on his stomach somehow, some way. Keeps it out. And let's not forget about the other guy in goal. No. Morris has been pretty solid here today. But during the beginning of that power play, if you want to go back and watch a video on that, you watch North Allegheny take the puck, move it around, make a couple passes. Three of the four Armstrong four, uh, defenders moved up to the line. They were able to dump one in, found Kalazi along the boards behind, I'm sorry, behind the net, and he was able to feather a pass back out in front. But it was broken up eventually, but you saw how the, the methodic part of North Allegheny came into play where Armstrong was fine for the first couple seconds and then all of a sudden found themselves out of position as they played around the back line. A little bit of luck. Sometimes you need it. Here's a traffic jam at the red line. North Allegheny trying to force this puck forward, and they do so. They stay on side, the officials say. 38 to go in the 5-on-4 for the Tigers. Logan, top of the left circle, centering. Second power play unit on now for Andrew Seiss. North Allegheny looking for Kaminsky at the side of the net for the one-timer. That did not connect, and so now North Allegheny has to carefully play this puck deep in their own zone as Caleb Hoffman was pursuing it aggressively. Last rush here in all probability for the North Allegheny power play. Logan with it again, deep in the corner. Kalazi waiting to accept the pass from Logan, who's just hanging on to it himself, puts it behind the net. The penalty is over, but North Allegheny still on the attack here. Kalazi between the circles. Rister, oh, that might have caught a piece of the crossbar. Evan Perrot very nearly made it 3 0 Tigers, but it skips over the Armstrong goal. Oh, they missed and the, the Riverhawks come back to center. Missed offside call went off of a went off of a Tiger and Luckily, it didn't go the other way. Logan Hooks fires from distance into the glove of Murphy, and so both teams will get fresh bodies on with 5-12 to play as we are back to 5-on-5. Five five. Well, good night for the penalty killers, no matter which team you're rooting for, mm -hmm. as it remains a 2-0 hockey game. It's been a pretty good game so far. I've been pretty impressed on both sides. Um, I think this is a, what you'd expect out of a champ, preseason championship game. You're going to see a couple mistakes here, a couple mistakes there. But both teams have seemed to react to what each other have been bringing to the table. And you got to give Armstrong credit, Brian, because the score being what it is, they just keep on chopping wood. Mm -hmm. The question is, at what point does the tree fall, if it ever does? Mm -hmm. And a lot of that has to do with the play of Ryland Murphy and the North Allegheny defense. Well, it, it is definitely... Uh, Something they're going to go back into the locker room and think about. What do they need to do to open up that extra shot maybe? Maybe they slow something down. Maybe they speed something up, move somebody into a different position on the ice whenever they're on their rush. But, I mean, that's what they did against the Pine Richland Rams in the second game, and it seemed to work. But it, maybe get to their speed. And as Morris makes a glove save and freezes for a faceoff and we get another line change here, we told you about the coaching change North Allegheny mm -hmm. was making, and... Uh, Andrew Seiss coming in this year after Mike Bagnato retired. And speaking of coaches, Jim Black famously coaching North Allegheny to its first ever mm -hmm. Penguins Cup and State Championships. His teams were a lot like this. You know, they would you would see their opponents you know rack up the shot totals on a nightly basis, but they just wouldn't solve that North Allegheny defense. And North Allegheny would get good enough goaltending to win games on a consistent <laughs> basis, and they would get opportunistic goals in big spots. And that's how they eventually won the championship, and they did so by toppling some really, really good hockey teams mm -hmm. along the way. And that was just sort of the M.O. of those Jim Black teams back then. Reminds me a little bit of that as we play on here with under four minutes to go in the second period. I mean, if you look at it the last couple of years even, it's the same situation that you see. I mean, they've been blessed with goaltending the last couple of years, but, you know, you haven't really seen those big names. Duderstad's the only one that really sticks out. Gallo right now. But the ones that have really stuck out that are not in net, and we've got a little bit of a situation going on in the corner. Yes, we do, as tempers flare. 
and like Ezra Simpson down in the corner. And down for North Allegheny getting up on his own volition is Luke Evans, the senior. And minimally, Simpson will be penalized here. Let's, let's see if we get any other penalties or if Simpson is going to be the only one in for instigating. It's a roughing call against Simpson. Of that much yeah. we are certain, and that appears to be all. He had a North Allegheny player pinned in the corner, and he was just taking his time getting up. I guess he gave a couple extra shots that the referee saw. I mean, I didn't see them, but it looked like that was a possibility of what was going on down there. So, Well, again, looking at this game from a tactical standpoint, I think back to that third Armstrong penalty right before the third power play. I think back to Andrew Seiss having a very spirited conversation with officials. Mm -hmm. Last two power plays went to North Allegheny. Mm -hmm. I ain't saying, I'm just saying. You know, mm -hmm. it's sometimes it works. It's preseason for the officials too. They're, they're still <laughs> that, working that on true. some. They're going to work out some stuff that for this season. You get a couple months off. Maybe you called a couple of adult league games here or there to keep busy, but you're still learning. You know, it's still working on it. And the speed of the game is something you have to get adjusted to. You're not getting the speed this type of hitting <laughs> in the adult league right now. These aren't the calls you're making. Uh, not much action yet on this particular North Allegheny power play. They are 0 for 1 thus far mm -hmm. with under three minutes to play to the ice cut here at the Alpha Complex. Irvin crossing the blue line, however. He has some space. He has room to shoot. That's a he goal. scores! No postage required on domestic shipping. Matt Irvin goes top corner, and North Allegheny gets that elusive third goal. It's a power play goal. Matt Irvin, the always dangerous forward, puts the Tigers further in command with 2.48 to go in the second. I was going to mention Matt Irvin and, you know, after what happened down there, take the penalty early in the period, but he's much improved this season in his offensive side of his game, and it's something fun to watch, hopefully, throughout the season for this uh, North Allegheny Tigers team. He just put that in a, a rough angle to the perfect spot. Oh, man. It was an absolutely perfectly placed puck. Try saying that three times fast. By I just the way. watched the replay. It was gorgeous. It was. It was a. That is what we hockey people call a goal scorer's goal. And mm -hmm. as we said, Matt Irvin most definitely uh, a goal scoring threat for these Tigers, as they lead three nothing with 2:38 to go in the second period, and North Allegheny now one for two on the man advantage, and the Hawks. Needs something positive to build on before the ice cut here, and they'll go fishing for this puck deep in the North Allegheny zone and work it back to the left point. Fired through a crowd, and it dribbles just wide to the left of Murphy, the NA netminder. Tigers gather it in defensively. Gallo looking for an outlet. Instead, he'll take matters into his own hands and send it deep in on goal where Morris will cover. And... Jeremy making a late line change here, as is his counterpart, Andrew Seiss, the first-year North Allegheny bench boss. Face-off coming up to Dylan Morris's left, and <laughs> speaking of you feel for Morris because there's literally nothing he could have done on that play. Um, but his team wins the draw, and here's Wyatt Tutak making some maneuvers to generate space and tries to send a shot pass to the side of the North Allegheny net that's just too well covered and the Hawks have to gather it back in at their own blue line and play it back to center. North Allegheny put it, or, yeah, North Allegheny putting it off the boards and dumping it in. Penalty coming up and it's going to go against the Tigers who touch up here. No, it's going against the Riverhawks. It is going against the Riverhawks. I stand corrected. It's going to be a rough along the boards if it's still out there. Now, we said earlier, it's uh, it's an interesting thing. The River Hawks, a very physical team. Oh, no, no, it was no penalty. Wait. Yep, no penalty on the play. It was offside. It was a delayed offside. That was what the hand mm -hmm. was for. Okay, we both stayed correct. I saw then. the hit along the wall, and I thought maybe there was a rough coming up, and it was ended up being delayed offside. I saw the same thing as well. No, you were, pop you were not at all off your rocker for <laughs> thinking what you were thinking. As I was thinking something. Similar. Hit happened, arm went off, puck came across, didn't pay attention, saw the hit. Yep. Delayed offside. Well, the Tigers oh. are 
onside here, but not for long as Armstrong comes back two on two in the final minute of second period play. Shot from medium distance, goes wide of the Tiger cage and fought for in the corner by Armstrong's Barty Gwynn as one of the Tigers went down. North Allegheny going back on the counterattack. And nice glove save there by Morris as Evan Perrault was streaking down the right wing. And that sees his play with 51 and change to go. After what I saw earlier, the last thing North Allegheny wants is to give Armstrong an opportunity here. And Armstrong, what they want is to get one in because I have never seen a team be able to ride the momentum that they rode earlier against Pine Richland. I have no disbelief of the fact that they won't do it again. Kalazi, if given opportunity. Resetting with the help of his defensive tandem, which includes Trey Gallo. Gallo up ahead to Baker. Baker over the line. Brett Baker trying to center it for one of the Tigers and putting it just wide as Kerber. Woulda, coulda, shoulda. Kerber that close to a second of the night with 21 seconds left in the period. Laymark locating that puck at his own feet for Gallo, his defensive partner. Gallo from the official's crease pulling back, being patient with his puck and dangling around a man with five seconds left in the period. Gallo to the goal. Gallo. Save oh, a rebound, it's loose along the goal line and pinned by Morris as one of the Tigers is knocked down. That was Kerber again. Oh, Kerber just can't buy a second goal as time runs out mercifully for the Armstrong Riverhawks. A heck of a sequence there, and Trey Gallo made it all happen at the end of that second period. He is having a heck of a hockey game tonight. He has a goal and an assist. The only goal of that second period, a power play snipe by Matt Irvin, and what a beauty it was. After two from the USA rink here at the Alpha Ice Complex in Harmerville, Pennsylvania, you're watching the St. Margaret's Fall Face-Off Championship game on 10-band TV where it is the North Allegheny Tigers leading the Armstrong River Hawks by a score of 3 to nothing. With Brian Mitchell and producer Todd Kazarowski, I'm Matt Popchock, and you are watching on 10-band TV.
Well, the Armstrong Riverhawks with dogged determination throwing what they can at the North Allegheny Tigers. They have put a lot of heat in the kitchen of Rylan Murphy, but Murphy has kept his cool, and the North Allegheny Tigers have kept their lead and added to it, for that matter, thanks to their power play. It is now 3-0 in favor of the North Allegheny Tigers as they try to hold off the Armstrong River Hawks for 17 more minutes and hoist the championship trophy of the St. Margaret's Fall Faceoff preseason tournament one more time. Matt Popchuk back with you here at the Alpha Ice Complex USA rink in Harmerville, Pennsylvania. Your scoring summary, Trey Gallo. We told you he was one to watch. We kidded you not. Armstrong with a glorious opportunity on the first shift of the game, denied by Murphy. Then moments later, Gallo beating goaltender Dylan Morris on a partial breakaway, unassisted for a 1-0 Tiger lead just 44 seconds into the contest. Then with a minute 57 left in the first period, Gallo from behind the Armstrong goal, setting up Evan Kerber right in front to make a 2-0 NA. And then after their first effort was a no-go, the second power play opportunity was a successful one for the Tigers with 2.48 remaining in the second period. Excuse me, with 5.48 remaining in the second period, it was Matt Irvin with a brilliant wrist shot from the left circle to beat Morris, assisted again by Gallo. Lorenzo Colazzi picking up a secondary apple as well. And that is where we stand right now. Total shots on goal through two periods of play. 28 for the Armstrong River Hawks, 19 for the North Allegheny Tigers. Second period shots favored the Hawks by a 14-10 margin. But again, Rylan Murphy, the North Allegheny netminder, has been the headline grabber thus far as Trey Gallo makes his presence felt in the preseason with a three-point night so far. And Gallo has the puck off the third period faceoff, and he will ice it for the Tigers, bringing a faceoff to Murphy's right just 11 seconds into the final frame. Matt Irvin, the most recent North Allegheny goal scorer, lost that faceoff, and Wyatt Tutak's wrister off the faceoff went just wide over the blocker hand of Murphy as the Tigers get it back to center for the moment. Now they have to reset in their own zone while Kuskus will do that to Perrot, right wing side. Perrot is knocked free of the puck by one of the River Hawks as it bounces around a neutral ice. Armstrong settling it down and getting it back to center for Jamison Yakmak. Yakmak going in deep after this one. Backtracking defensively for the Tigers is Lamarck. And a hard hit on one of the Hawks there along the near half wall as one of the referees is inadvertently knocked down by one of the Armstrong skaters. Play continuing here, two minutes into the, uh, one minute into the third period, pardon me. Alex Heron going down behind the River Hawks goal. Tigers on the attack here early in the third, trying to add to a 3-0 lead. Heron on his backhand, trying to use his body to generate a turnover deep in the Armstrong zone. He can't, and the River Hawks are able to work it back up inside the NA zone. Gallo playing a lot of minutes, and he's going to be one tired young man at the end of the night. Both these teams playing in semifinal games earlier this evening. And, you know, the, that kind of makes the championship game like a, the proverbial box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. You never know how much energy these players are still going to have in the tank after already playing a competitive game just a few, <laughs> a couple hours earlier. It really is a sight to behold as the Hawks are guilty of icing and That'll bring the faceoff back into the Armstrong zone to the right of Dylan Morris with exactly two minutes gone by here in the third. Now, 
Irvin to take the draw against Jake Graff. Irvin wins it. Irvin, very strong upper body, uses it to maintain possession to Barnhart. Barnhart threw a crowd. It was blocked. And up ahead it goes to one of the Hawks who is trying to play it on one hand. That's Chase Huff. Huff behind the North Allegheny goal. Couldn't do anything with it. Colin Kutch cleaning up, putting it from the hash mark off the side of the Tigers' net. One of the Hawks going down in front of Rylan Murphy, the N.A. keeper, as the Tigers make a partial line change here. Ditto the River Hawks with North Allegheny in possession, deep in its own end, and it goes off a glove, punched up into the air on a little bit of an excuse-me play there by the North Allegheny defense, and it's actually going to be rolled a hand pass against the Tigers, and so that'll bring the faceoff back in the general direction of N.A. territory. Crawford calling for the puck drop back inside the zone to the right of Murphy. Caleb Hoffman lining up against Kalazi, and Hoffman wins it for two tack. His wrister goes wide of the glove hand of Murphy. Out in front by Yakmak playing it blindly as Murphy swallows this puck in his Tiger Paw uniform logo. Another face-off coming up in the left circle here along the near boards. We look directly to our left, and we see Kalazi again taking the draw against Hoffman of Armstrong. Kalazi wins it and kind of pickle stabs at it, but it goes to the far corner. Turnaround try by Yakmak is blocked on its way to the net. And A, unsuccessful in its attempt to clear there. Kalazi picks it up, sends it around the dasher boards, but not out. Owen Check bottled it up, and Yakmak kept it alive at the left point. Dumps it into the far corner for nobody in particular. Yakmak stabbing at that puck as Hoffman goes toward the NA bench to play it. Yakmak putting a body into Kaminsky now as the Riverhawks play this puck in front of the officials' crease and into the North Allegheny zone. Tigers go D to D. And coming the other way for North Allegheny and losing this puck, Brandy Gwynn for Armstrong putting it wide. Kick save made there by Murphy along the far post. Centered out in front for Tutak. Tutak put it off a North Allegheny leg as it goes wide of the net. Off the side of the net it comes now, and the net is dislodged. Armstrong can't believe it. Oh, the Riverhawks with a good shift there, trying to chip into this 3-0 advantage that North Allegheny continues to hold with 13-11 left in regulation. And a bit of a break there for the Tigers as the net becomes dislodged. Face-off to Murphy's left. Tigers clear it, but not all the way out. Now they will as the Riverhawks have to tag up, and that allows Perrot to stab at this puck at the top of the center circle. Murphy snatching that in his left paw. And the Tiger goalkeeper will hold on for another face-off as Hooks was unable to beat him. Logan Hooks, that is, the defenseman, as Adam Hooks, his fellow junior and forward, wins the faceoff for the River Hawks, and Murphy will eventually cover on his left-hand side. 33 saves now for Rylan Murphy. What a neat little story developing here for the North Allegheny Tigers. And a lot of quality shots among those 33 as well. Armstrong generating all kinds of traffic in front, trying to take away his eyes, some bouncing pucks he's had to track. But nothing has fooled him as of yet. Good effort there by Adam Hooks to keep that play briefly on side for Armstrong, but North Allegheny's able to get it back into the River Hawks zone as the Hawks play it on the backhand. And here is Adam Hooks outletting it up ahead for Bardigwin. Bardigwin. Barty Gwynn spitting around at the right hash. Barty Gwynn trying to create some space for himself, for himself rather. Held on to that puck just a little too long, and the Tigers have a two-on-one if they hurry. Perrot, left wing, has Gallo open. Perrot going to shoot himself, save made. Rebound! Gallo is there, but it was swiped away at the last second. And I think that was Logan Hooks, who at the last second got the stick on it 
and swept it away from the vacant goal. Todorov drops it back for Ezra Simpson. Simpson unable to find someone to hook up with, and so the Riverhawks will have to reset as Morris casually plays this puck with his stick. And a fighting for it near corner, but Armstrong will win this 50-50 battle. Back to the neutral zone where Barnhart picks it up at the red line and plays it for North Allegheny, which methodically sends it deep into Armstrong territory. Now the River Hawks going to ice this puck with 11-10 to play in the third. Jeremy with a wholesale line change here before the own zone draw. Andrew Sice, the first-year coach, getting some fresh bodies out there for North Allegheny as well. Sice, longtime assistant. He's the head honcho now after Mike Bagnato's retirement. Wyatt Tutek, who's had some good chances for the Hawks this period, but nothing to show for it, puts it wide of the goal, does the assistant captain for Armstrong. And Colossi coming back the other way on the counterattack for N.A. Dances through the right circle and puts it just wide of the glove hand of Dylan Morris. Didn't seem like that one missed by a lot. And here's a chance the other way for the Riverhawks as Yakmak has his stick lifted by Gallo. Gallo continuing to play that elite 200-foot game that we talked about earlier. He's got three points on the night, including the game's opening goal. And if this score holds up, it would be the game-winning goal, for that matter. And he's doing everything he can in the meantime to support his goaltender, who makes a great read of that one-timer by Franceski, who was driving the net, trying to redirect it between the legs, perhaps, of Ryland Murphy. We get a whistle now and a stoppage in play. And give the senior 35 saves now with 10.05 to play in the third period and his team up 3-0. Face off to the right of Dylan Morris, the Armstrong Tendy. Tigers. Get it in behind the goal line, fighting for it far corner. Really starting to throw their own weight around. We said that Armstrong was typically the, the really physical bunch, but North Allegheny has risen to that challenge as Murphy covers. Matt Popchuk here with you. Flanked by producer Todd Kazarowski of 10 Band TV. And glad you could join us for this special 10 Band TV presentation of PIHL preseason hockey here at the St. Margaret's Fall Faceoff, the championship game here. You're watching live with the North Allegheny Tigers looking to defend their title against the Class AA Armstrong Riverhawks. And so far it is... Last year's first place finisher in Class AAA, the Tigers, with the commanding three-goal lead. Now, sometimes that one seed can be a curse, and this year, certainly the goal for N.A. to turn that curse into a gift and translate that Strong finish last season into a little bit more postseason success. And at the left hash mark, here's Colin Kutch putting it toward the goal. That missed. Huff unable to do anything with it on the side of the North Allegheny net. Chase Huff, the senior, continuing to fight for that puck behind the net before North Allegheny finally takes over and comes back two on two. Perot creating a little bit of space on the right wing, but a good poke check there by one of the River Hawks. That was Kutch with some great back checking there to make that happen for the River Hawks. And a steal here by one of the Hawks, and a shot put over top the net. And missing the goal on that opportunity was Todorov. 
Nikolai Todorov, the junior forward. Another quality chance for the Riverhawks to spoil the shutout bid here for Rylan Murphy. But Todorov just airmailed it. Todorov comes off now. Fresh bodies on for the Riverhawks who are right back on the attack. Centering pass, backhander deflected in on goal. Murphy somehow is able to locate that puck from his knees and freeze it for a defensive zone faceoff. Just over eight to go in regulation. Well, is there a St. Margaret's trophy in the Tigers' future? They'd like to think so. Holding on to a firm 3-0 lead thanks to goals by Trey Gallo, Evan Kerber, Matt Irvin. Irvin's tally coming on the power play, the only power play goal of the game for either side. Rister between the circles is taken by Wyatt Tudak and swallowed up again by Murphy. 41 shots on goal for the Armstrong Riverhawks. Out shooting the Tigers at a 2-1 clip at this point. But North Allegheny, the more opportunistic bunch to date. Owen Sheck to Franceschi. Franceschi, top of the right circle, puts it just wide. Franceschi, from the right point, dumps it in the near corner. Carson Franceschi, the junior defenseman with a busy shift here for the Riverhawks as Tyler Gallo defensively enters the offensive zone for North Allegheny. Gallo losing the puck eventually to Owen Sheck, one of the other defensemen to watch in the PIHL this season. We talked about Gallo and Sheck for their respective teams pregame. Now, it hasn't been Sheck's night offensively so far anyway, but... He defends very well. He's a solid fundamental player, and eventually when the regular season starts, he is going to fill the net and contribute offensively for the Riverhawks. I don't doubt that for a minute. Tyler Gallo, as I said earlier, with three points, he's contributed to every North Allegheny goal thus far in one way or another. Irvin retreating. And he takes this one-touch pass that's centered and just rolling underneath the stick of one of the Tigers. That's Evan Kerber. Kerber would have had a ton of space and a ton of time to shoot if he had been able to hang on to that puck, but it was just bouncing way too much. From the point, it's hard off the blocker of Morris. That shot taken by Owen Logan from distance. Riverhawks gain the red line, dump it in, and change it up with under six to go in the third. North Allegheny three, Armstrong nothing, and here's a turnover to the Riverhawks. Logan Hook settling it down along the boards, but it's swiped at with a glove by Kaminsky of the Tigers. Kaminsky is drilled in the back right in front of the backup goaltender long for North Allegheny, and Kaminsky none too thrilled about that as the puck ends up in neutral ice. Luke Evans playing it for N.A., but Armstrong has it off the glass, and now Evans is knocked down hard by Todorov. Todorov, uh, one of the Tigers tried to line him up, and that was Lorenzo Colazzi trying to retaliate a bit there as Czech is bumped as he let go of that puck by Kaminsky. It was a hard shot from the left point, a snapper by Owen Czech that is absorbed Head-on by Rylan Murphy. 5.08 to go, and Murphy still looking very much in control of this hockey game with the Tigers up 3-0. Brian Mitchell and I told you earlier, the Hawks have shown metal in this tournament, and they're going to need some with five minutes to play in regulation. North Allegheny looking for back-to-back -back championships here in the St. Margaret's Fall Faceoff.
Silver Hawks with it. Above the right circle, into the corner it goes for Hoffman. Hoffman to the right point. This shot is blocked by one of the Tigers defensively. That was Wolkoskis getting his stick on the ice to make that play. Hoffman has it for Armstrong from the left hash. He's very well covered, but he's going to try and put it toward the net anyway. And not much to write home about there as the Tigers are able to clear the zone as we approach the four-minute mark of period three. And you got to wonder, will Dylan Morris stay in his net or will Ed Jeremy experiment with the extra attacker? I mean, you know, it, manifestly it's a preseason game. You might as well try some stuff, but you also don't want to sabotage what fleeting chances you have too soon here with still some time left on the clock. Armstrong, a very capable team offensively, but they have been frustrated by Rylan Murphy all night long in this championship game, and time is a luxury they do not have as Dylan Morris makes a nifty glove save at the other end to keep it a 3-0 affair with threes on the clock, 3.33 to go in period three. North Allegheny that much closer to taking this preseason tournament final. Luke Evans to take the draw for N.A. And Adam Hooks doing the honors for Armstrong, and Hooks won it for the River Hawks, who try to outlet it near side for Bardiguin. Bardiguin unable to take that pass, but Hooks has it for Armstrong. Hooks fan on the shot, and Murphy kicked at it at the last moment. Otherwise, Bardiguin would have had all kinds of net to shoot at, and it would have been a 3-1 game. The River Hawks just cannot seem to catch a bounce here against the Tigers in this championship contest as the puck hits the rafter and is ruled out of play. Both teams changing units here with just over three minutes left in this final period. North Allegheny holding off Baldwin, another team with great goaltending, to earn the right to be here. Earlier tonight it was Armstrong rallying past Pine Richland, a team that is notorious for filling the net in Class AAA for the right to play in the championship game. 44 saves now for Ryland Murphy. The count just keeps on climbing. And Dylan Morris still in net at the other end as Kerber tries to stick handle around one of the Riverhawks defensively. That was Owen Sheck standing his ground. Such a smart hockey player, Owen Sheck, the assistant captain of the Riverhawks. Rister, uh, that might have caught a piece of Morris's blocker as it sailed over top the net. Barnhart toward the goal. That's deflected just wide by Brett Baker. Tigers teed up. For Kalazi, save made by Morris, rebound, unable to get there was Evan Kerber as he was knocked to the ice by Owen Sheck. And the Riverhawks are guilty of icing as we get a little bit of a chippy moment just as the whistle blew. One of the Tigers swiped at by Wyatt Tutak. And that was Owen Logan earning that icing call for North Allegheny. And with it, the offensive zone faceoff that follows. Heron to take the draw as Andrew Sice is emptying the bench a little bit here in the waning moments. Side of the net. Oh, what a save by Morris. Evans had all day and night to put it into the open net. And I'm not sure if Colin Kutch, number 17, got a piece of that with his stick and redirected it into Morris's body. But in any event, that's the save of the night for the Armstrong goaltender. It might go for naught, but a heck of a play nevertheless to keep the score 3-0. Backdoor play is not successful as 
camping out on the doorstep was Heron. And we get a whistle and a stoppage in play with just under two to go here in the third. Heron will take another offensive zone faceoff for N.A. Against Adam Hooks, and Hooks wins it this time. To Logan Hooks. Barty Gwynn with it. Up ahead for one of the River Hawks. That is Adam Hooks. Chase Huff retreating to center red to play that puck into the North Allegheny zone. Barnhart through center. Minute and a half to go. And this shot from distance taken by Logan is gloved down by Morris. And so barring some somewhat miraculous proceedings, it looks like it will be the North Allegheny Tigers who for a second year in a row take the St. Margaret's fall faceoff title. Last year they defeated a team from the south. This year a team from the east. And a great way to start his first season in charge for Andrew Sice. Now they say you can't erase a first impression. Well, winning a championship preseason or not, that's a heck of a first impression. And Sice with a very talented team to work with this season, and it has shown in both games this evening as we're going to get a penalty here assessed to the Riverhawks, I believe. Brett Baker was dumped along the far boards, and Logan Hooks is not happy about the call. But his pleas fall upon deaf ears as the Tigers will get their third power play of the game, or will they? Uh, they're going to send them both off. They're going to say that Baker and Hooks were both pushing and shoving. It's coincidental roughing minors. With 62 ticks to talk here in Harmerville. And so as Kerber comes on here, we remain five aside for the game's final moments. Franceschi toward the goal. That sat at a couple of North Allegheny feet before the Tigers had the wherewithal to clear it and dump it in on goal where Morris knocks it aside to his right. To the point it comes. In on goal, kick save there by Morris and a loud one as Armstrong tries to get one last counterattack going. Jonas Miller, the freshman, dumping that puck deep, but North Allegheny's just going to send it back to center with half a minute and counting to go. Chase Huff is bodied up, and he retaliates as Kalazi takes a shove to the head from Wyatt Tutak. Temper's heating up here, and finally, we're going to get more penalties here. And again, we're going to get coincidental roughing minors here. Officials wanting to keep control of the proceedings here as time runs out. Kawazi will be sent off, and Chase Huff will sit as well with just under 21 seconds to go in the game. So two men in each box, and still five-on-five -five hockey being played here between North Allegheny and Armstrong. Face off at center ice is won by the Riverhawks, stolen by the Tigers. Riverhawks unable to clear their zone. Swiping at the puck with 10 seconds left is Brock Murphy. And for the second PIHL preseason in a row, Harmerville is Tiger Town. Rylan Murphy with a 44-save shutout of one of the most exciting and capable teams in PIHL Class AA as the Class AAA first-place team from a year ago, the North Allegheny Tigers, defeat the Armstrong Riverhawks 3-0, and the Tigers are your back-to-back -back St. Margaret's Fall Faceoff Tournament champions. Andrew Sice, the first-year head coach, quite a feather in his cap for this North Allegheny varsity program. And Ed Jeremy's Armstrong Riverhawks 
Boy, what a valiant effort by them to defeat Pine Richland earlier tonight, but ran into a brick wall here in the championship game, and that brick wall had a big number 50 on it. Ryland Murphy with the Herculean effort in between the pipes for North Allegheny as the teams engage in the traditional handshake, and great to see this tradition resuming with the pandemic dying down in the United States and protocols being lifted and some things being loosened up and returning to as normal as normal can be. Love the display of sportsmanship at the end of these events. Part of what makes the sport unique. And you see right in front of us Trey Gallo, the hero offensively for North Allegheny, talking to Jamison Yakmak. And those two exchanging some nice pleasantries and congratulations. Gallo with a goal and two assists tonight. What an effort by him at both ends of the ice. He earned his keep, and the North Allegheny Tigers earned their keep. And we've got a trophy presentation to show you, so stick with us for just a couple seconds longer, and we will have that for you. The North Allegheny Tigers, very opportunistic. And very sound defensively as a group. And getting great goaltending. Superlative, really, from Ryland Murphy. A 44-save shutout for the North Allegheny senior. And this Tigers team, once again, is going to be very, very dangerous and very fun to watch in Class AAA. And you could certainly, again, say the same for the Armstrong Riverhawks, final result aside. Riverhawks very much an up-and-coming bunch in PIHL Class AA. A lot of players who have been with that program in some way, shape, or form for a lot of years are starting to come into their own all at once. And they didn't get the win here, but we certainly expect big things from the Riverhawks this season as they will be one of the teams to watch going forward when the PIHL regular season begins for Class AA and for everybody else on the 3rd of October. It'll be here before you know it, folks. And there you see the victorious North Allegheny Tigers for the second year in a row posing with the St. Margaret's Fall Face-Off Championship Trophy. A lot of great hockey played in the preseason here in Harmerville at the Alpha Ice Complex, as there always is. This event annually draws out the best of the best of the best in the Pennsylvania Interscholastic Hockey League. Lots of exciting games. North Allegheny shaking off a shootout loss, as we said earlier, to their big North Hills area rival, Seneca Valley and shaking it off to make it all the way to the championship game of the preseason tournament here and winning tonight and hoisting that championship trophy of the St. Margaret's Fall Faceoff after defeating the Armstrong Riverhawks. Once again, your final score, the North Allegheny Tigers 3 and the Armstrong Riverhawks nothing. Special thanks to PIHL social media coordinator Brian Mitchell for joining me on the cast tonight. Special thanks to producer Todd Kazarowski for making sure we don't burn down the proverbial house, as always. And special thanks to you for watching and listening uh, on very short notice, we might add, for this very special presentation of PIHL preseason hockey on 10 Band TV. And we will be back with you at some point. As the regular season gets going once again on October 3rd, we've got lots in store for you. And don't tell me I forgot the intrepid photography of one Jared Todd Hunter. Oh, I could never forget Jared Todd Hunter. And there Jared Todd Hunter is to remind me not to forget Jared Todd Hunter. He does fine work as well. And you're going to want to check out Todd Hunter Productions for all his photography. Once again, North Allegheny wins back-to-back St. Margaret's Fall Face-Off Championships with a 3-0 win over Armstrong. I'm Matt Popchock, and thank you for watching it all on 10 Band TV.